Okay, so here we are. Let's get started. Basically, this is wind damage from the hurricane. Got a little tar paper showing here, but it looks like it's intact, so I'm not going to worry about it. But I got to replace these shingles here. Now, typically, what happens is the wind gets under them, they either rip or they get blown off. As you can see, the wind was 150, 180 at some point, and that's just no match for these shingles, which are rated around 90 or 110 if you put six nails in it. However, that's only for the first 10 years. These shingles are 18 years old. So the first thing I'm going to do is I got to get my flat bar here and I got to start popping these tabs. Now I'm going to take this shingle out right here. So in order to take this shingle out right here, I've got to take nails out of this row up here, which is this shingle, this row, which is the top of the shingle or the headlap as they call it. I call it that too. But anyway, so this shingle here that you can't see because it's gone, this row goes all the way up here is the top of the shingle. So there's nails up here in this row that's in this shingle that I'm going to take out so I can replace it in its entirety. Now in this case, I've got one, two, three, four tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the full shingle wherever it is, which there's the seam right there. So it's going to be one, two, three, full shingle, and then I'm going to take out one tab. I'm not going to worry about taking out the shingle all the way over. However, you can. It's the same process. You're just going over another two tabs. So first thing I'm going to do is get the nails out that I want. I'm right here, so I need to get this nail out right here. Getting started. And I want to be careful because I want to save this shingle. So I'm going to get under it and just lift it and get it out of there. Just like that. too much or you'll, you'll end up just replacing a whole bunch more than you want to. Just want to take your time. It's faster if you take your time. Now I start from the top down because I'm as I'm removing nails I'm removing shingles which then removes nails for the row under. Fret. You can repair it with roof cement. You just want to be easy and limit the rips. Okay, almost there. I'm trying to keep track of my nails. Okay, so now this should come right out. There's nails in it too, but I'm going to get those in just a second. There we go. So see the, see where the nails were. So now I've got nails under here. I'm going to go ahead and get them out while I'm, while it's fresh in my mind before I start stepping on them. it out. 
I've already got this loose, so that's a that's a good thing there. Try to cut it nice and straight. So the first row is out. So now these subsequent rows will come right out. Should come right out. You notice I'm leaving the nails in. That's only because they'll be easier to get out once I remove that sheet. So I'm gonna have to cut this one again. So I'm going to get this, this shingle out first. Okay. So here we go. This shingle's fine. I'm going to have to cut it here right here because it's ripped but I'll have that when I get I'll have that exposed once I get this one out This one is ripped over here too. been exposed for six months so there's been debris and such gotten under here so one of the things that concerns me is just the nails underneath after that it's just a matter of getting rid of them so I don't have to nail through them when I go to put the new shingles in battery powered blower here.
I don't have any shingles up here. So I'm gonna have to go get some. Okay, there we are. Now, this spot here has got a little rip in it. I'm gonna fix that with roofing cement. I'm not gonna worry about that. I've got plenty, plenty to repair on this roof. That little place right there is not gonna matter much in the grand scheme of things. But I just wanna make sure that all the chunks are out. You can go through and seal all these nails nail holes but I'm not going to it's not necessary 100% unless you're gonna walk away and come back tomorrow or something you want to protect it from leaking because those nail holes will leak without a doubt if it rains because now it's an open hole when it had the nail in it even though it may still leak it wouldn't be as much of a problem only because there's a nail in the hole still could get a leak though better be safe than sorry all right so since it's four tabs dry, what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and cut my tab and put it in before i start putting nails in nice and straight because I want to make sure I get the rows straight. So what I'm focused on here is this here. And I'm going to take into consideration the rest of it, but you can see it's a little bit bigger up here. It could be the shingle brand. It could be that these shingles have shrunk because they're 18 years old. Or it could be, I guess that's all it could be. Because I, I don't, I'm not sure if I use the same brand or not. Um, shingles are hard to come by right now because of the supply is a little short because of the storm. Okay. So what I'm going to do before I mess this up with my hammering, I'm going to put my foot over here and that's going to keep this row straight over here. I'm going to put my hand on this one and I'm just going to make sure and I'm going to get it in. Then I can fix it if I need to. That's one row. Whatever's easier, you want to start at that side, come this way, start at this side, come that way. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's a five tab. Look at that. All right, basically the same concept there. I got it nice and straight across. This shingle is here, so we want to make sure and get those nails. You don't want to be nailing up here. You want to nail at least in here. I'll have to refer to the instructions and see where it says if it wants it under or over the tar strip.
So it's saying right here that it wants the nails under the tar strip. It's actually calling for the nailing area to be even within the tar strip. It says it right there in the instructions. So basically, it's wanting you to nail in the headlamp. And right here, because I've gotten a little bit of flack for nailing in the tar strip when the instructions are actually calling for it. So the instructions are saying right here to right here, which this, this we call that the key or the tab of the key. This is the key, that's the tab of the key. Right here to right here is what the instructions are saying, which is right in the headlight, which I am within those parameters. Okay, second row done. Good, nice and straight. Get some nails in it. It's a little difficult because we've got to go under, but it's no different, just a better chance to hammer your fingers, really. And then remember, we took nails out of this row up here, so we're going to have to put those back as well. Don't worry, any rips that you might have done, we're going to, we're going to get to that. We're going to do that here momentarily. The first thing I want to do is get my shingle here installed. So I'm pretty much going to do it the same way. It's just this one is a little bit different. Because I have to hold this other one up. It'd be good for a helper to hold it up, but I don't happen to have one of those at the moment. Now I've got the shingle set, I can take my foot away. so far so that it breaks. Then your repair is not over then. Which it's very easy to do. You'll snap it right off. You just want to take your time. There's a rip right there. So get it lay down flat. Put the nails in it. There, but we'll put some roofing cement on there. Okay. Next step, I'll tighten it up. Tighten it up with some roofing cement. Okay. 
So the objective with the roofing cement isn't necessarily to seal everything. What we're doing is we're doing a combination of sealing the holes that are left from the nails we don't put back in the same holes, number one. Number two, any gaps that we have in the shingles, because we had to cut them, we can seal those. And number three is putting some more wind resistance on the shingles that we took off when we popped the shingles. So I like to go row by row, putting a little bit of stickum here for the new shingles on the existing stickum. Doesn't take much, just a little bit. Now I'm going to come scrape some of that off there. Ooh, see that? I'm going to put a nail on that. Very carefully. Old shingle, whoop, new shingle to old shingle, new shingle to old shingle, coming back, 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 back. New shingle has the stickum, leave it. Old shingle. Okay, remember I had to take these up, so I have holes here. Shingle, new shingle, new shingle to old shingle, old shingle to new shingle. Little stick them there, a little bit of a gap right there. Take that away. That was, yeah, that was the gap. So, oop, oop, I'm missing a nail there. Better go ahead and get that. Okay, so that's looking good. A little bit of a gap there. Let's go ahead and remove it. That's the way. No problem. Hole. Old shingle. Yeah, good. Nope. Okay, this one, I didn't have any holes, but I'm going to give it some assistance here. I got two holes. And so you can do the holes and provide that wind resistance at the same time. And you don't really want to put enough that it weeps out. But it will if you step on it. So try to keep from stepping on it. Might be a good reason to go from the top down. There's that crack. So I'm just going to put a little roof cement on top. Then there's another one open. take it out put it back some of these tabs are up a little bit 